Greetings. Welcome to a Simmer and Gabby. Rob Simpson along with Bruce Boudreaux. I'm here in the, uh, not really in the hockey cabin. You are back in the hockey bar. boy. Yeah, this is uh, where we are here now. I don't, I'm not here often, but if there's, if we ever have people over or something, we got the big screen TV and we can watch stuff in this room here. So, and like, it's so crazy. I got a fully stocked bar. I don't even drink. Uh, so, right. but it's, it's, it's been there for years. Well, it's good. You got to entertain guests. You got to have options. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're going to a Hershey bears game on Sunday evening. I'll be going to a Seattle versus Columbus NHL game on Sunday evening. There's football. There's a lot going on, but of course there's a lot going on in that Western race. Kings hit a bit of a skid. Uh, is there, is it just a natural thing? Well, I don't think it's natural. I mean, they played um, uh, for, you know, I mean, I, I'll give Todd his first year. Uh, they weren't very good, but the last uh, two years that they've made the playoffs, they've been a really tough out and they play really hard. And, and so this, and they started out the same way, like they were saying, okay, listen, we're ready for bigger things. We don't want to lose out in the first round. We're ready to be a, you know, a, a conference final or a Stanley cup team. And I really did think they were going to. I mean, I'm watching um, them as we as we speak today. But I mean, it's uh, uh, I think it's more than just a little bit of a skid. I think uh, something's definitely wrong in in Denmark, and it, it has nothing to do with the the coaching. I think uh, uh, some of the players just don't look when I'm looking at the watching the games on TV that they're playing with the emotion that I'm used to. Uh, a Todd McClellan team having. So it's, uh, I don't know what's going on, but it's, uh, uh, I think they've got a game uh, as we speak. I don't know when this is going to be played, but the, uh, they're playing St. Louis and Nashville, two teams that are closest on their, on their trail to being uh, um, uh, in the playoffs. And I mean, I think they're, you know, when they've only won two out of 14 or something or two out of 15 now, I mean, these become must games. And I mean, before a much needed break that the Kings are going to need. Yeah. And it's not like they're utterly dinged up. Like some of the other clubs have gone through. I mean, young Quinton Byfield has been a day-to-day -day guy a little bit. Uh, Victor Arvidsson's on IR and they got a backup goalie on IR, but otherwise it's a healthy team just trying to figure things out. Uh, one team that's unhealthy in one very important spot is that speaking of teams that has slid and that would be the Minnesota wild one of your former clubs they've lost a couple in a row they're well back I think six ish back of the wild card spot with a bunch of teams to climb and I just point to Jared Spurgeon uh he's only played 16 games this season I remember Dean Evison was here he was there talking to me or I was talking to him about Spurgeon his value and, and this guy might be one of the more underrated players you had him for whatever four and a half years yeah you know what um for a guy that's five foot seven and 160 pounds i mean there's a reason they made him captain he's uh uh he's a leader i mean when he's healthy he uh before this year he was playing 25 plus minutes every night you can put him on the power play the penalty killing he was a 40 point plus guy uh or 40 point um 40 point guy plus yep. and uh uh he He's one of those guys that, I mean, uh, you know, if uh, you're in the locker room and things aren't going well, he's the one talking to you. He's, he knows people really well. I think he's extremely missed um, uh, more for the, you know, like, I mean, for the everyday captaincy matters as well as the on ice stuff that you miss from him. And uh, it's, uh, it's too bad because they've really had to scramble uh, on defense, they've had quite a few injuries. Quite uh, frankly, Jonas Brodine has been hurt. Don't forget, they lost. They had. They don't have Matt Dumba, which is always used the, the the since I got there and before. Minnesota's strength was defense, and and the guys that uh, uh, when I got there that made us one of the best defensive teams in the league. When you look at it, I mean, you had Marco Scandella, Matt Dumba, uh, Jared Spurgeon, and. Uh, um, and whoever else I'm forgetting right now. Uh, but I mean, you had all those guys and Jonas Brodine, you had those where and Ryan Suter, you had that main set of defensemen and, and now granted Brock Faber is, is really good, but, and you know, I mean, but I mean, you're missing, 
you're missing those guys, I think. And, and I really believe that that's the core that they're winning. And that's, uh, that's, that's why they're not winning right now. And the other thing I think you pointed out weeks ago right here was, you know, Philip Gustafson has not been the same Philip Gustafson. It was a tough, tall order to continue what he was doing last season. Of course, Mark andre Fury has been a little bit dinged up, although he did pass Patrick Waugh for the second most wins for a career in the NHL. But yeah, there's just little issues there. And just to clarify, as we speak right now, Minnesota's six back of the wild card positions, which are shared by the Kings and Predators at 53 points. Blues are one back, Kraken are three back. So the Kraken. But, you know, if you you put it in simpler terms, almost uh, they got 35 games left in their season. And uh, to get to the 96 point stretch, they need at least uh, 25 wins. Right. And uh, 25 wins out of 35 games coming down the stretch is a really that's going 25 and 10 that that's uh i don't know what percentage of hockey it is but i've got to believe it's over 700 and that's a really it's doable of course you can get hot and and pull an edmonton oiler thing but i mean it doesn't <laughs> get happened very often that's why we're talking so much about the oilers all right and just to check your math and to be even more specific because they're they're actually up to 49 games now if you're referring to the wild so they have 30, uh, 33 games left. Oh. And they To get the 96 points, they would, well, to get the 95 points, they'd need 24 wins. So you're still looking at 24 and nine. So mm -hmm. pretty much what you said, but if you want to get real specific, same kind of thing, 25 and 10, 24 and nine, that's what the wild are looking at. Anybody below that, forget about it. Um, and there's a big gap. Anaheim, Anaheim's 11 behind Minnesota. And then anybody above that, well, they can get away with a little bit less than that percent. Well, I think I think that's why Seattle's still in the mix because there's a whole bunch of uh, teams right there. I mean, the problem is when you're when you look at it on paper, it goes, oh, we're only three back. We're only you know uh, we're right there, one good week. But it's the amount of teams that are there too that they're not all losing all the time. So you're always somebody's gaining on you if you don't continue to win and. And that becomes the problem. Yep. And the Blues have won four in a row, and they have two games in hand on the Nashville Predators. Um, at the other end of that spectrum is the wild and crazy Edmonton Oilers, a 16-game winning streak as we speak. I mean, you've had winning streaks. You've had odd streaks. You come into teams, Vancouver, you, Washington, wherever. I mean, it's got to be – the feeling's got to be incredible. But you just ride the wave and hope you don't pick up bad habits getting loosey-goosey. Well, you uh, never feel like you're going to lose. That's the one thing. You never feel like you're out of it. I mean, uh, I'll go back. Um, I was playing with the Baltimore Skipjacks in the American League when we set the American League record of 16 in a row. Yeah. And I think it's been broken by Norfolk, uh, John Cooper's team, but I'm not sure. But uh, uh, every game we played, we just thought we were going to win. And we, when we broke the record, I remember uh, we were playing in Binghamton. And uh, we were going to Hershey the next night to play. So I think the, the owners of the team were on the bus. There was a little bit of champagne flowing. I think there was, uh, we lost the next game, but then we won five after. And uh, after that, I mean, and I really think if we were really uh, like into it on that game in Hershey, we probably would have had a 22, 23 game win streak. But it's, uh, it's amazing uh, you can come into every game and you think you're going to win. We won 14 in a row in, in Washington one year, and it didn't matter if we were down 5-1 in the third period. You just knew it was going to happen. And it's same thing. I was lucky enough to, um, to do win, win 12 in a row in Minnesota and, and 11 in a row in Anaheim. And you just go, you, you go at home at night and you pinch yourself. Like, I mean, what's going on? We're winning these games. I mean, uh, what, how do you keep the team going? Like, I mean, there's like every, there's different approaches all the time. I was heard the other day from somebody who said, well, I just let it go. And you don't, uh, uh, you, you don't say anything and everything else. Whereas I always took the approach when you're winning is the time to criticize and you never get satisfied. And uh, when you're losing, you show mistakes, but you build everybody up. So it's uh, it all depends on on how you are and who you are. And uh, but I mean, those streaks 
Um, the one thing I always used to say is when we get to eight, nine, or 10, you're in rarefied air. Enjoy the thing because not everybody wins 10 in a row. When you get into double digits, it's something so special. You walk like you're a little taller. You are you don't feel the ground. You feel special. And, and who knows, if they had had a better start, they'd be uh, right up there, obviously, looking at the president's trophy. But uh, right now, they're doing something really special. And I think the big test for them is Vegas. Vegas might get some players back by the by after the break. And I mean, Vegas still wants to be, I mean, if you look at where Vancouver is and they might be, um, they might win the division, uh, safe to say, but then the second and third place team are going to be Vegas and Edmonton. So you're not only playing to keep the streak alive, you're playing for second place. You're playing to, for sort of like, uh, uh let's, Hey boys, like if you're Vegas, you're saying, Hey, slow down. We're still the Stanley cup champions and you got to go through us. Or if you're, if you're Edmonton, you're going move aside, boys, the big train is coming through. <laughs> well, here's the interesting thing. Uh, Edmonton has five games in hand on the golden Knights five and they're six points behind. So that, that right there is like, well, if they win it a you know, if they go three and two, they're tied or they're ahead of them. I mean, they will see that you can look at it that way, or you can look at it. If I'm Vegas, let's win the next game we play against them. They'll yeah. be eight back and they have to win all five just to get two points ahead of us. Right. So, I mean, it, you know, it's, uh, I, I think perception is how you look at things and how you bring things to the group that makes them either feel good or feel bad, but you can, uh, it's a, a, here's a saying I always use like when I'm playing or when I was coaching is uh, the difference between a rut and a groove. I mean, they're, it's the same thing, but yeah. it's exactly the opposite meaning. So, I mean, uh, if you wanted to be in a, in a rut or a groove, like, and I use the example, sorry, I'm uh, rambling on maybe That's a little good. bit, but uh, I mean, if you're uh, two, one and one, okay. Uh, in your previous four games and you lose the next game, you're going, oh man, we've lost three out of five or, you know, I mean, we're, we're under 500 in the last five. Or if you win the next game, you've only lost one game out of the previous five and you're doing pretty well. You're on a pretty good roll. So, I mean, uh, that's how I used to present stuff to the team. Well, you also used to say win the week. Yeah, win the week was always important because short-term goals are an awful lot easier to achieve than long-term goals. If I would come in and say, like well, any team that I took over in mid-season, if I said, hey, we're 16 points behind uh, a playoff spot and we got to win the next 10 in a row, you'd right. be going, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you just right. keep winning two out of three, you can show it on 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 graphs, on maps, on everything, how, how you could easily catch up to that team. By the way, just for fun, the Edmonton Oilers are also, they also have four games in hand on Vancouver. So um, not that they're going to catch them, but they could. I mean, you don't think you don't think, over. Uh, no, it's not over, but you don't think um, Edmonton would like to have those three games over they had in the first 10 days of the season against no. Vancouver. Of course. I mean, they, I don't, I, I don't know if their season series was over yet. Uh, I haven't checked, but I mean, if it is, I mean, their season series would have been over in October, which is really strange, but I'm sure if Edmonton plays Vancouver, they're really looking forward to that next game. Uh, I'm pulling it up right now while I ask you the next question. Uh, I want to circle back to the injury issue. Um, sometimes, and maybe you can kind of rel relative, make this relative to long-term, short-term. When you have a short bench, uh, the Seattle Kraken just went through a stage where they had a short bench. They're playing down a man, essentially. They had so many injuries, a little rash of people sick or um, – or dinged up. Uh, is it safe to say it's maybe good in the short term because guys like the ice time and you know you're got a short bench, maybe you have more concentrated talent, but over the long run, guys are gonna run out of gas. By the way, the Oilers and Canucks play on April 13th. That would be the third to last game of the season for Vancouver. Wow. And the mm -hmm. game is in Edmonton. So who knows if the way things go, it could come down to that. But what about short bench, long bench, and for how long you want? Well, I, I think, you know, for a game, you can do it. 
You know, I mean, you might get away with it for two games. I mean, uh, uh, but at the the same time, anything more than that then means you're playing you're playing players more than you want. If you had three games and four nights and you had to play a short bench all three games, that's where more injuries are susceptible. Like, I mean, because more guys are, instead of playing as a forward, you want to play uh, in a perfect world under 20 minutes a night uh, as a coach, you'd like that. But uh, if now your star players or your better players are playing 23, 24 minutes a night and they're becoming a little more fatigued and when you're fatigued, injuries happen. So, I mean, uh, it, it can get done and you can um, you can rally them for a short period of time, but for a long period of time, there's no chance. It's the same way, Rob, as if your star player gets injured. I always say in the short term, everybody pulls together and makes up, but I mean, it makes up for the loss of a, a star player in a very short term. But over a long period of time, you're definitely going to miss them or him and uh, and then it really affects you. Yep. All right, let's move on to our favorites. And I, 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 this is a layup for you, I'm assuming. I didn't even think about it when I threw the number out there, but we're doing number eight. <laughs> it's sort of a layup. But you know what? I've been lucky. I've probably uh, uh, coached the two, Ooh. what I believe are the two best number eights in the history of the game. Two of the and three best. Two of the three best. Okay. Uh, but I'll pick Obi. I mean, uh, over and over Timu Solani, yep. uh, only because I, I had him at his peak, whereas I had Timu at the end of his career. Um, but uh, uh, Alex Ovechkin to me is uh, just a special breed. I was so glad to see that uh, he scored a goal last night. I mean, it's only his ninth, but, uh, you know, I mean, we all keep waiting for him to all of a sudden get. 14 goals in eight games, you know, something stupid like that. But uh, uh, I've never seen a guy that could score, uh, not at will, but uh, score so often with the shot, doing the same thing. And everybody knows where he is. Everybody knows what he's doing. And yet he can still score. I mean, the year he won the Hart Trophy with me when I was coaching them and and he had 65 goals. He had games. There was one game he... uh, cut his leg wide open for 20 stitches in, in Ottawa. And we were playing in Montreal the next night. So, I mean, he looked at it and going, you're thinking there's no chance he could move because it's on the inside part of your, uh, your thigh uh, or, you know, up top. So if anybody hits it, stitches are going to open. He says, no, no, I play coach. I play coach. And then he gets four goals. And I mean, (laughs) you just sit back there and you watch him on the bench and you watch at that point in time, I'm watching Montreal, uh, they um, they used to use Mike Komisarek as as the shutdown guy against him, and him beating him for four goals, and it was everyone was Komisarek. You could see Komisarek coming to the bench, going, "Oh my God, how can I stop this guy?" But that was Alex back in the day, and uh, uh, you know when and if he ever retires, you're going to see highlight films of him for years and years beyond that. Hopefully he gets there. I hope he gets there. You know, maybe picks up somewhere 10 more this season in the second half and then throws up a 25 or next year. He'll get a little, like you said, he's going to keep going. I think he'll just keep on going. And and it's bitter for me because my two favorite players are Gretzky and Ovechkin. And in, in my, in my history of knowing people and, and sort of admiring them. And, and I mean, you want them to break it because the excitement, uh, of doing it that would get so much national attention, then you don't want him to break it because, I mean, uh, it's Wayne Gretzky. So, I mean, it's uh, it's going to be great either way. And uh, I hope Alex uh, starts, to, starts to score. So who'd you pick? Well, first of all, the other thing about the grade eight that impressed me is how quickly you learn the language, English. Because I remember having to do, I was in Boston doing the Bruins games and I had to do a live TV walk-off with him as a rookie. And I'm like, why the mm-hmm. hell? We, I, I realize he's like the young star with Sid, but what the hell? So I learned Spasiba, which is thank you in Russian. He got a big kick out of that. But otherwise, he could hardly speak English. I go, this is the craziest walk-off ever. I think it was like a year later. I'm like, holy smokes. Like he really worked hard yeah. at it. Well, let me tell you something. Every time I was criticizing him, he said, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but anytime you wanted to show him a good play, he'd go, yeah, look at the defender. He goes this way and that way. And then when you said, Alex, you got to back check a little more. He go, well, I don't understand, coach. Don't understand. All right. My, uh, my eight is uh, the third one that we were 
uh, off referred to, and that would be Cam Neely. Um, just an absolute beast. Uh, he had 50 goals in 50 games, not team games. So it doesn't officially count. It was 50 goals in his personal games a year. He was coming back from the knee or the rehabbing season. Um, like you, a movie star, Cam Neely, you were in uh, Slapshot playing for the Presidents. Yes, Hyannisport. Mm -hmm. Hyannisport Presidents. He had a speaking part, of course. He was in Dumb and Dumber. He played Seabass. And every time I see him, which is at least once a year, I say kick his ass Seabass because you just have to. And he doesn't mind. Mm -hmm. um, but Neely was just a force. He was the consummate power forward. And I'm sure you have probably, well, let me think, did you, how much would you have overlapped? Not, no, uh, you would not have overlapped. No, he that. was in the, he was in the middle from the time yeah. I was uh, definitely playing in the minors to the time I coached. He was in the eighties and nineties, uh, you know, but his career was, uh, he could have been like, and he was a superstar, but I mean, he could have been like an all time great scorer, but his, like Bobby Orr and the, the great Bruins in front of him, those knees uh, took a beating, and and that's the way he played though. And is, but you know what I remember about Cam Neely, uh, and I I think I'm right here is the 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 night that he got benched in Toronto. Um, with Kevin Stevens with Kevin Stevens, and I mean, uh, if you looked at, I remember talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago about this, and and. When uh, you look at Kevin Stevens, he was sort of laughing and like, you know, this on the bench. But when they panned the camera to Cam Neely, it looked like if he could have killed the coach, he would have killed the coach. And, he, and he, I mean, it was, it was Steve, Steve Casper. Casper. Yeah. And they were teammates at one point, too. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it's uh, it's crazy what you have to think you have to do sometimes as a coach, but you got to know who you're going to do it against. Yeah, he was, he was a scary individual. And by the way, uh, um, Darren McCarty and Claude Lemieux patched things up. There was a documentary, you know, about McCarty feeding them in the, the big March yep. of 98 yep. or 97 brawl in Detroit. So they patched things up. I'm not sure you want to, I'm still pretty sure we're not supposed to bring up Ulf Samuelson's name around Cam Neely because that was the knee. That was the job. Oh. Yeah. I think their murder might still be on his mind. I don't know that for sure. I don't want to put thoughts or words into his head, but he was not happy with Alfie. So, because <laughs> that's... No, no, you out. know what? And that's that's why I think it was almost his... Uh, it probably happened a couple of years later, but it was injuries like that and to Bobby Orr and that uh, they changed the rule that you can't go low and hit a guy anymore yeah. uh, because it's, it's in hockey... You know, it's not like football where almost everybody wears braces, like especially on the linemen. I mean, the, unless you tore your knee ligaments before, you didn't wear braces. And uh, and back in the day, you, you'd just get it taped up. And if you wanted to go low, you could really, really damage somebody. And guys got reputations for that. And, and once you got that reputation, they were coming after you and uh, you had to, had to watch out. Mm. Well... Uh, you and I will both be in Toronto uh, during all-star festivities. I'm not sure we're going to run into each other. Hopefully we will, but it might prevent us from uh, cranking out one of these. So we'll, uh, we'll leave fans with this entertainment for this week. And I appreciate it. And hopefully I do run into you. Have fun there and enjoy uh, all the hockey action. We got a break coming up. A lot of teams have got like 10 days off. It's ridiculous. So it's going to be it's, fun. It it's actually killing me because I don't know what to do uh, <laughs> when I'm not doing something. And, and so it's i uh, I I'm looking now there's only two games on today. There's one game on tomorrow and I'm going, and then I think the Kings are the last team that plays before the break on the 31st. So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's going to be strange because now there's only one football game left. Baseball hasn't started. And sorry to for the listeners out there, I'm not watching too much basketball these days. So <laughs> it's, uh, it'll be, it's come on the Cubs and watching the Bears. And that's what I'll be doing. Hershey Cubs in the juniors and Hershey Bears in the American Hockey League. Hey, it's good hockey. I agree. Thanks, Gabby. Are we done? Already? Right. Holy jeez, you're making it easy. Okay. You have a good week. Talk to you soon. You too.